today. Um, as Mr. Nolte mentioned, my name is Fernando with the Tenderloin Community Benefit District. Um, and as he mentioned, we have a, a program tomorrow evening to talk about all our projects and programs. Today I'm wearing a little bit of a different hat and I'm talking to you about an MTA project. This is the Safer Taylor Street project. This is a project that is going to look at taming uh, traffic on Taylor Street. The project, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the overview. I'll talk about a community input process, which is what we're in right now. Uh, basically, we're going around and doing as many of these presentations in front of the neighboring Taylor Street community um, as possible. And from those presentations, they're more general information. And then if any community members want to be more involved with this project, they can enlist into uh, a workshop and then become part of the planning group or steering group for the project going forward to have real say on how this project changes Taylor Street. Um, so again, I, I thank you for this opportunity to be here today. Really appreciate it. So Saver Taylor Street, as I mentioned, we'll talk a little bit about the project, why Taylor Street is part of this project, um, the community participa participation project, and then at the end, We'll show a few slides about projects that have gone on in other cities and maybe some in San Francisco that have looked at kind of calming streets. Um, how many people have heard of Vision Zero? Okay, a good amount of us. So Vision Zero is an initiative um, that is looking at reducing and removing uh, pedestrian injuries and fatalities by the year 2020. This is a project that's part of the Vision Zero uh, initiative. So again, the project, the, the goal of the project is really to calm the traffic, uh, pedestrian safety, slower speed, and also a more enjoyable experience um, on the sidewalk. Whether that to you means more greenery, a wider sidewalk, calmer cars, some art, whatever that means, that gets input into MTA's process as they go forward. So the project area, it starts at Market Street, so Taylor Street, all the way up to Sutter. If, as many of us are probably familiar, especially at that Market Street, you know, that's where Golden Gate comes in, it goes down into 6th Street, then you have Market coming up, and it's just this crazy nexus. Every time you get in there, you're like, whoa, which way am I supposed to go right now? And there's a car coming, watch out. Uh, so just a, a little brief overview of the project timeline, so kickoff in the spring. We're kind of in this public engagement phase right now. That will go through the whole process pretty much right up until construction, which is in 2018. Beginning later this summer, within about next month, those workshops will happen. That steering group will be formed to work directly with the design group. And so that's where the de design phase, where you really get into the nuts and bolts of these kind of projects. So that's where you actually work with the engineers, the designers. This is very kind of up above bird's eye view, if you will. And, and I'm not an engineer by any means, but you've probably already figured out by now. So why Taylor Street? Well, in a study looked at, there were 109 collisions on the corridor from 2011 to 2016. Of those 109, 69 uh, involved pedestrians. So just let that sink in, I mean, has anybody been affected by something like this? Either a friend or, or personally, you don't have to share your story, but just by a show of hands. Well, it's funny how, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I happened to be walking on Market Street here there, and there's an immense traffic jam. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I found out later, when I walked back up here, that there was the muni bus just, you know, uh, went out of order right in the middle of one of the intersections. But it does seem to be a very heavy, heavy traffic street, and I'm not sure why, if you expand on the previous slide, why is it such a heavily trafficked street compared to the other ones? Again, I'm not an engineer or a city planner, so I, I, I don't want to give misinformation, but as a, as a person that lives here and, and, or, or walks that area a lot, I mean, you have people trying to get on the highway using 6th Street, you have that nexus of all those different streets. This is a one-way street shooting up that could be a you know an artery to cut up to a different part of the city. So it's a variety of factors. 
because Leavenworth is a maid to it going the other, well, that's also going north. But it's also very, you know, like the cars really race and all the street lights are synchronized so they get up a good head of speed. That's something that hopefully they'll change is the way the street lights are synchronized, right? Right, I mean, part of this project could be looking at street lights, looking at crosswalks. Is there enough time to cross? If I, say, injured my leg or if I didn't move as quick as my, my friends, do I have enough time to cross the street before a car comes trying to make a left onto a one way? Could you? Yes, sir. Who's, who's, who's pushing this? Who's behind this? This is an MTA project. It's a funded project through Caltrans. What, what, why? I mean, I, I walk Taylor at least two, three times a week, and I don't see it as any busier than, than any other street. If anything, it's streets that are going east and west that are busy, not going north and south, such as Taylor or Leavenworth. Sure. By the way, I just watched, remember the Steve McQueen movie, Bullet? Okay. Well, in that movie in what, 1968, the traffic is one way coming down. Right. Now it's going up. Anyway, I, I, don't, sure. I don't see the need. And, and as far as traffic lights or crosswalk times, I, th I think it's adequate. Okay. Well, I, I just did pass around a form for feedback. And if you feel like this project is a waste, go ahead and put that on that form. If you maybe are related to one of the 69 people that were injured in the last two five month. years. Two a month. Two a month. Maybe that doesn't feel like a lot to some people. Maybe yeah, to others it feels like quite a bit related. So I'm going to go ahead and try to continue through the presentation, and then I'll answer questions afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of our ground rules to try to be positive, get positive feedback. Uh, so uh, just remember, there's ground rules on back of the agenda because we want to. Uh, it's on you being videotaped and you have the. Uh, this will be up on YouTube, so uh, remember that. Thank you. Um, so. One of the things that this project could also look at is the sidewalk. So when we think about the street, we're not just thinking about the road and cars. We're also thinking about how we use our sidewalks. To me, the sidewalk is an important sort of place. You know, it's a, it's a way to hold space. You know, when I don't have a meeting, I just go outside. And I walk around and I end up with three or four meetings and I talk with folks and I meet people. So just the thought about the sidewalk experience the other thing about this project is this is an actual opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one say to someone who's actually going to be working on this project and implementing it. So if you live nearby or if you're a business nearby, this is a way to actually really truly be heard and be in the same room as the folks that are going to carve up the street and the sidewalk and change it. So as I mentioned, we're in this kind of outreach phase. The Tenoy Community Benefit District and our Safe Passage Program is working with WACSF, that is a uh, pedestrian safety advocacy group. And then we'll move into that community working group I mentioned, with Al Williams is the consultant. That's a, a consultant firm on sort of design and engineering. What's the scope of this? I mean, from where to where? I from, I consider it. Again, I'll, I'll try to answer the questions at the end, but it's uh, all of Taylor Street beginning at Market up to Sutter Street. Thank you. So what will happen in that sort of capacity building phase if you attend those workshops, you'll go over different types of things that could happen to the street. These are just some examples. You have these continental crosswalks that are a little larger. Some of the things that could happen, again, more time to cross. Raised crosswalks is another example. These things called pedestrian scrambles that you see in some of the European cities where people are sort of crossing in all different ways. And then you have bowl bow, sort of widening curbs and changing the way a car could turn left or right. You'll do other things, walk audits. I'll be going on one Thursday for two hours, walking up and down, counting people, counting cars, counting the time between sidewalks, and just making a bunch of different types of observations. And I'll be trained in that before I go do it. Eventually, you form the part of the working group that you'll work directly with MTA on the project as it goes throughout the entire phase. So these are just some of the other things I mentioned in terms of imagining a street, some of the stuff that could happen. And so this is Taylor Street today. This is looking down from O'Farrell. Just looking at some of the things going on, there's a, a, a person in the crosswalk with a truck going by. There's also a person in the crosswalk on the other side 
actually crossing O'Farrell Street using Taylor with a car mid crosswalk. So one of those people is crossing against the light. I'm not sure which one. I think it's the one on the left. And one of those cars is moving. So this is kind of looking at everything, the way pedestrians are using the sidewalk. And could there be signage? Could there be ways to do education with the community? Those kind of things. I mean, it's really open. So this is what, you know, a lot of us think of the sidewalk. You think four lanes for cars, little sidewalk on each side for people. Well, here's another way to look at it. A couple lanes for cars, much wider sidewalk. It's a gathering space. You got a guy playing guitar, walking the dog, a little bit of everything. This is a street, I believe, in Mexico. So you have before, it's like they took it on a rainy day, and then on a nice bright day, you see this colorful, vibrant artwork. I don't know if you can see that in the back. But just really thinking outside the box. You know, would you like to see something like this along Taylor Street? This one is kind of an example where there's more greenery, a little nature brought to the, to the street to try to change the experience. So you can see on the left, no greenery. On the right, you've got the green, colorful trees. Think of Bob Ross, a little more trees. And then you can see this is really presents kind of a dangerous situation. These folks waiting to cross on this tiny median. You know, if someone slips off that curb or something, there's not a lot of room for, for error on that one. And this one just widening. You can see it's raised, where, and then it's not raised. So someone on a bike or maybe in a wheelchair, they wouldn't have to worry about, oh, there's a median and a curb. How am I going to get around this? How am I, I want to go there, and I can't. So these are just things to take in. And you would maybe observe some of this stuff as you were out doing the survey and make suggestions based on your actual observations. So just another example of adding greenery. Is it a more pleasant experience? They've widened the sidewalk in this case. Whereas in the top, you see it's all cars. There's a big bus coming right very close to the sidewalk in the foreground of that photo. And uh, this one, they use this here's a little example with you know planter boxes. I would venture to say that the planter boxes that are being wheeled out just down the street are looking even nicer than this one. They have actual local, I don't know, Earl's not here, but they have some beautiful artwork on the side that he did for the Year of the Monkey. So that's the gist of the project, like I said, very just overview, bird's eye, and I'll open it up now to questions. The survey's going around. It'd be great if you're, if you're interested, if you could just fill out very simple questions, interested, yes or no. If you're interested in really being part of this working group moving forward with the project, you can list that as well. This gentleman's been waiting, and then I'll ask you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, why they did a survey of collisions from that 2011 to 2016 looking at different data and what they're looking at is the top 12 percent of the injuries that have happened in collisions and Taylor Street in that project corridor comes into that top 12 percent so it's disproportionate in terms of other streets is it like number one is it the worst street in the city I'm not sure about that, sir. But if there were 100 streets, it would be in the top 12, percentage-wise. Just to give you a... If, you, if you'd like to know the exact, and you put that on that form, I will find out the answer for you, and I will get you that answer. So who benefits by these Taylor Street improvements? What businesses benefit from it? Is it the new businesses that have come into Taylor Street? I would challenge you to look at it as a pedestrian issue. That's what this project is trying to address. Now, if about the commercial capitalist issues, like how that affects the community, and I would then say, does a calmer street is it better for a business if people can walk by it leisurely or not? And in well, it would have been better to spend 10 to 20 years ago then, yeah. before some of these other businesses were forced out. Um, uh, I've been talking about 
about pedestrian safety fine, but I think something that you're old, you're not either you know and you're not looking at it in this presentation, or maybe you're not aware of it, is the daily city of Santa Cruz traffic crowd that drives down 286th Street and Taylor Street commuting to downtown. Mm -hmm. I think Taylor Street is the freeway. Um, what measures are you going to take to, I know it includes 6th Street in this, but to slow those people down who think that it's Devil's Highway and pedestrians don't, don't matter? Yeah. Well, those, this is, those are the people who are dangerous. This project is about calming traffic. Well, I'm, I'm just curious what steps you're going to take to calm the people who think that Taylor Street is part of the freeway. Well, that, their commute to downtown. Yeah. that would be the question for the project planners and the answer would be you know they would probably look at reducing speed reducing lanes widening sidewalk and you know whatever else they can do to calm traffic this is all about the calm well, I, I know on 6th street they're talking about turning it from, from two lanes to one lane yeah and that could be part of it as you saw there were wider sidewalks and less lanes for cars so that, that could very well be part of the project. And if you were part of this group, you could keep that in, their, in the forefront of their mind, that what about the pedestrians walking and not the cars coming from well, the other regions I, that you mentioned? I'm, I'm disabled and I don't cross streets anymore. That's too risky. Thank you for sharing that. This gentleman's been waiting for a while, and I'll, I'll go to you and you. Thank you. So you were showing the photos and you said we should think out of the box. I don't think so because yeah. you know, with the artwork you were showing down in Mexico, you know, uh, two years ago, we did a proof of concept uh, during uh, Sunday Street yeah. on Taylor, oh, was it Jones and Golden Gate? Mm -hmm. You saw the IMT on mm -hmm. So yeah, we did that. Yeah. And then we also engaged the community in that Ali had been uh, painting um, uh, one huge work, like two and three long, uh, in the alley. So that, you know, I think that we would be interested in uh, having some real serious like input yeah. uh, with the design because we've already done, done this it. with the community and we've also included the community when we did it. And right. So that would be kind of <coughs> cool to go from, I mean, to do that. I mean, like the validity and why it's happening, I'm not sure, but I, uh, I think we've been kind of waiting for something, an opportunity to do something. Yeah. Well, you, this is a, an opportunity to get involved with the project if you'd like to and share the ideas and also your experience. Well, we want the to experience that you got. Art on those, on those sidewalks. Yeah, right? we want to design it. That'd be fantastic if it was yeah, like local art as opposed to bringing someone from somewhere else. Exactly, which happens so often, and then, and then the Tenderloin is just filled with so many local artists, and it also so many residents that do love local artists. So I think that, that would be uh, kind of cool. Thank you for sharing that perspective. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm Denise Dory, and uh, I've been coming to the Tenderloin since the 1950s, and we used to go to Original Joe's and try to park the car. And we broke when it was a two-way street. That's a nightmare. We had to. My parents, I always heard them complain about it. I can remember from when I was five years old. And, I don't want to drive. Well, we're going to go to our favorite. Car. So when they made them one-way streets, it worked a lot better. You know. And the less uh, they take away lanes, because I live, I, I watch the traffic go by every day from um, uh, Lombard Street, it goes down Eddy to the freeway, you know, down Fifth Street. It's a main artery. And, it, you know, th places like and Eddy and Taylor, you know, they, you need like a one-way street on Taylor, too, not to impede the traffic, because we're building more housing here, and there's going to be more traffic. We, we have all these events here, and we've, we're taking away all the parking, as it is, you know, to build housing. Where, and with no parking. So, um, you know, and it would impede, I think that uh, there's a lot of emergency vehicles that would be impeded if you widen the strips. You know, the, the emergency vehicles would be impeded and that might be even more dangerous. Because I remember in the 50s, it was dangerous. You took your life in your own hands when there, there weren't as many lanes, you know? You really did. It was very, when I was in the 70s, it was a lot easier to drive around here. You know, when it had one way, it was a relief, you know? I was glad I could drive a car this time. But, you know, and then, for now, I, I watch a lot of traffic go by every day, you know, and it gets by pretty smoothly, so I hope they don't start adding more of these parklets. You know, right. those parklets have sharp edges and hurt people, you know? You should put no sharp edges in parklets. Huh? Yeah, or, or maybe you. no parklets, just put a little something, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll take her, and I don't want to be mindful park. of time for the other presentations. 
Um, so yeah, we have uh, two more uh, questions, and then we'll move on. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, uh, you can always talk to the first one afterwards. That's certainly right. Okay. You can, if you'd like to be more involved. You can